I don't suppose this could wait until... Hey, Captain! No, I didn't think so. Miguel! Si, sí, pero Mar... I... I brought the... Right. Right. This is great. That blows the movie for me. My mom just gave me a list of errands to run, and they're all over the place. Same here. It must be a parent's conspiracy. I brought the popcorn, and I even wore my bogey button. No, we've all been looking forward to it for two weeks. Casa Blanca. Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman. And no commercials. I'll let you know how it was when you get back. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. There must be a way we can get all this stuff before 4.30. What do you have to do? Mm -mm. Let me see yours. They'll go to the movie. How? Because these are all in three places. You take one, you take one, and I'll take the other one. We'll be back before two hours is up. Great. Come what on. are we waiting Let for? Let me see a pencil. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you gotta go, you can move real fast or move real slow. Locomotion at any speed gets you there when you got the need to go. Gotta go. Gotta go, 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 gotta go. Give your all if you move in a crawl. Move to the beat if you've got feet. Get on the wing if that's your thing, just move. Everybody move. to go you move real fast and move real slow but everybody when they had the need move themselves at their own speed so go everybody go gotta go gotta go gotta go gotta go gotta go gotta go gone racehorses are a special breed of animal. They're trained to use their powerful running muscles for one thing, speed. Come on with that one! Speed horses, Gretchen M. On the outside, ball valentine, legendary gift moving along the rail. Favorite back in the outside, now third, coming on the outside. Getting the most speed out of the horse is the jockey's job. Jack Cannell became a professional jockey when he turned 16. Getting out pretty good around the turn, you know. Yeah. You could have kept me in, but I, I don't want to see if you could do anything. Yeah, you know? right, right. He was gonna get... A jockey's day begins at dawn. Jack and his younger sister, Jill, live with their parents in Maryland. 
Jill intends to make racing her career, too. Jack's nickname is Cowboy Jack. And Jack and Jill live like cowboys always have, traveling wherever the work is, moving from racetrack to racetrack. Is that Jack coming out of the gate? Yeah, it's him breaking now. Woo! Speed is measured by distance covered over time. Once you know how far something traveled and how long it took, you can figure out how fast it went. You can tell how fit a horse is. And if a horse is really fit and really muscled up, you have a better idea if he's going to run faster than a horse that doesn't look as well, but you can't really tell until you're up on him. Coming out of the gate is really a big thrill for me. You know, the speed of the horse and the first jump and then during the race and then coming down to the wire when you're in front, there's just no feeling like it. It just gives you such a good feeling to know you're in front and you want to race. Hey, Jill, what makes a horse a really good race horse? I mean, what do you have to do to prepare it? Um, special care and training. A lot of training goes into it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you gallop him or you walk him or you pony him every day. Mm -hmm. And then you take, like he's doing, you bandage him up. You do him up and you just take special care. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with that horse? Why are you wrapping up his legs? Well, this will keep him more comfortable. It'll cool his legs out. He trained this morning and, you know, to keep him from becoming sore in any way, to keep him sound so he'll be able to run. You take care of a racehorse the same way you would take care of any other trained athlete or football player or track star or what have you. When I first started riding races, I was 10 years old. You got to be 16 when you get into the big time. The jockeys are athletes, too. One of their hardest jobs is keeping their weight down. The more weight a horse carries, the slower it runs. For me, I need to stay right around about 109 pounds. I gotta watch myself all the time. I gotta watch what I eat. Okay. It's now post time. Horse can cost anywhere from a thousand to a million dollars or more, but you never really know what you have until you start racing him and see how he turns out to be. Every horse has a different personality. Each horse has got a different style of running. Some are what we call front runners, going fast the first part of it, and then they'll slow down the last part of it. And there's other horses that are, you know, come from off the pace, which are slower the first part of it, and they speed up the last part of it. It's just every horse is different, you know. Every horse can't be in front. We time the race and measure the distance and time to find out the speed of the winning horse. took one minute and 32 seconds and ran at an average speed of 30 miles per hour. Jack's horse came in six tenths of a second later. Speed, that's what a racehorse's life is all about. Okay, this takes care of me. Miguel, you have to go downtown, right? Right, the uh, subway should take half an hour and then half an hour for shopping. Okay, and then you can take the number five bus 
and pick up my mom's shoes at the repair stop, and then that'll take another 15 minutes, so... And then I can pick up my grandmother's package on my way back up. Um, I should be back in about an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. Okay, now I just take the subway to Midtown. It's 20 minutes, mm -hmm. half an hour for shopping. I think I have to take one bus, but that's another 15 or 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I should be back in an hour and a half. We can really get this done in less than two hours. And then we can get back in time to pop popcorn. Oh, our reward for a job well done. Let's not worry about the reward until the job's done. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's move. And come fast, on. come on. These are speed skates. Is that what you guys are doing around here, speed skating? Yeah, we're practicing for competitions. Like the Olympics? Yeah. That's great. Would you like to try a speed skating? I would. I'd love to. Okay, let's go in and get a pair. Great. What's your name? My name's Angela. What's yours? Mine's Kathy. <laughs> Bob Corby coaches Angela and the rest of the U.S. speed skating team. Bob, this is Kathy. Hi. Hi, Kathy. He's the, he coaches the U.S. national team. Oh, so he's your coach? Yeah, and she'd like to learn something about speed skating. Okay. Got my outfit? <laughs> oh, how you like it? Nice. It, it's not very warm. Oh, it's, it's, not, it's not for warmth at all. It's for speed. Uh -huh. and, uh, it's, it's for two things, to, to let you move completely freely so it stretches di two different ways, the long way and then across here like this. Yeah, you can so really... That, yeah, you're completely free and it also reduces wind resistance. 30% of the effort that they're expending out there is to overcome the ice resistance and 70% of the effort is to overcome the wind resistance. So wearing a suit that reduces the friction that you're creating going through the wind is extremely important. So that it, it feels like a giant bathing suit. Yeah, that's exactly the material. You have the competition suit, and all you need is a pair of skates. Oh, they don't weigh anything. No, they're pretty light. The blades are so big. Mm -hmm. That's Everything's why the blades are built big? for speed. The, uh, the, much, the blades are much longer than your figure skates because they're built for gliding across the ice. That's harder, isn't it? Mm, maybe to get going, but once you're going, you can you go faster and you can keep going longer. <laughs> speed is what speed skating is about, and this is how you measure it. The first thing you have to know is the distance you're racing, in this case, 500 meters. Then you have to know how long it took to go the distance, 40 seconds. When you divide the time into the distance, you get your rate of speed, 45 kilometers or 28 miles per hour. To go fast, speed skaters have to push to the side and back. The sharp edge of the skate blade digs into the ice, moving them forward. Why do the uh, skates move so quickly along the ice? Well, the, uh, actually, the, there's so much, the blade is really tiny uh, on all skates. It's really tiny, so it creates a lot of pressure, and it like instantly melts a small layer of water, and so we're actually gliding on water instead of snow and ice like you. So as like my, the weight pushes down, it melts the ice and yeah, there's a little water in it? Yeah, it's real fast, and then it freezes up about a little ways behind right you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. How come they're all crouched down like this? So they can increase the length of each stroke. If they can push two inches longer on every stroke, it'll make them go much faster. Oh, I see. So the down farther they are, the farther out their legs can go. Right. Maybe uh, Angela can show us uh, how to do it here. You want to try? Sure. Okay, now as you can see Angela going by, uh, you can see how low she is mm -hmm. and how bent over upper body is, how the strokes are going long and out to the side. Yeah, she really gets that leg out. Uh-huh, yeah. They skate extremely low, and that's mainly my job, to tell them to get low about 500 times a day. <laughs> what are they doing, all those kids in a pack like? 
racing and going in and out. Yeah, they'll follow single file to um, help break down wind resistance for those behind. The person in the front has to work a little bit harder, but then they change leads. And they also, other reasons, a person can help learn better technique by sitting behind someone who skates very well and they can copy their technique a little oh, bit. Oh, I see. Ready? Go! There's the start. Oh, now that's different. How, what does that start? Why are they jumping like that? Well, they have to do, to build up speed. And then they're in different lanes, as you see, one's inner lane, one's outer lane. Uh -huh. So that um, they're both, one can't, doesn't have an advantage over wind resistance. Okay, and then they're coming down in here. You see Bonnie's now on the outer uh -huh. lane. Seconds. What does that make their speed? Uh, close to 30 miles an hour. It's the fastest. Is that faster than running? Much faster. Yeah, much, much faster than running. Swimming too? Yes, much faster. So it's... this is the fastest thing that a person can do? Mm-hmm. That was great. Are you exhausted? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Pulling all that cold air. Now it's Kathy's turn. Can <laughs> uh, uh, I try it? Okay. All right, why don't you guys get a line going out here and Kathy can jump in and... They have to promise you. not to skate over me if I fall down. Okay. You don't win every race by speed alone. Sometimes the winner is just whoever finishes first like in a ride and tie race. Ride and tie was used to travel in Europe in the 1700s. And there are stories of how people used it in the Old West in America. Two people would start out with one horse. One started running, while the other rode past him on the horse. After a few miles, the rider tied the horse to a tree and ran while the horse rested. When the runner got to the horse, he untied it and rode until he passed his friend on the road. When he was rested, he would tie up the horse and start running again. Then the friend would catch up, untie the horse, and the whole thing would keep going like this until they got to where they were going. Now people do it for fun. Each ride and tie team has two people and a horse. One person takes off on the horse while the other starts off running, just like in the old days. at least five times to keep your horse from getting exhausted. It gets checked by a vet before you continue. This is a rule to protect the horses. The people have to take care of themselves. isn't to run or ride as fast as you can. The whole point is to plan how long to run and how long to ride so that the whole team finishes the race. It's more important to plan your team's pace than to race at top speed. But like any race, the winner is the team that crosses the finish first.
big race. At the cafe, they overhear a runner, Jake Sykes, brag about his seven-minute miles. And during the race, they clock him at the two-mile marker. He's right on time. Vicky's friend Cece comes in first, but discovers that her antique store has been burglarized during the race. Someone stole a treasure map. That's a map. I found it when I bought the shop. A friend of mine, Jake Sykes, writes pirate novels. And he recognized the signature. Sykes, he was in the race. Yeah, Mr. Seven Minute Miles. Look at the artist's signature. Gideon Gooch, is that the year, 1699? Yes. And Jake said that Gideon Gooch was a pirate in Captain Kidd's crew. And that's the year they were raiding off the coast of India. I still don't get it. That's not a map. It's a leaf. A fig leaf. <laughs> well, look for the X. As an X marks the spot. I see it. Well, I'm no botanist, but no leaf has a crazy vein system like that. Well, I got a hunch that Gideon Googe was drawing something else. Jake said that Captain Kidd's treasure has never been found. I think that's where it's buried. But where is where? Well, I looked at a map of India, and the veins matched up exactly. To what? The delta of the Ganges River. Hold it. You said it was stolen. When I realized that someone had broken in, my first thought was the map. The paper had a watermark, a pair of swans. Well, the swans are gone. Then the map's been switched. This is a fake. The leaf veins are different, and X marks the spot has been moved. Does anybody but Sykes know about this map? Well, yeah, my partners. I mean, it takes a lot of money to go all the way to India treasure hunting. We're meeting here with an attorney after lunch to draw up the partnership papers. Sykes is in? Yeah, and Amy Fitch, she's, she owns a cafe, and a friend of mine who works at the hardware store, Ned Stone. Then it had to be one of them. It couldn't be. They were all at the race. Perfect alibis. Too perfect. And planned to the minute. Whoever broke into the shop knew that the village would empty out for the race. Does anyone else have the key to your store? Well, just Amy. She takes over when I go on buying sprees. Listen, don't let anyone know we're detectives. Let us do a little bloodhounding. Ricardo, see if you can find out if anybody hung around town during the race. Skip, we'll go check out the cafe. What about that big mud hole at the end of the run? Wasn't that a mess? Uh -huh. Oh, do you have the key to Cece's shop? She accidentally locked herself out. Sure. It's on the hook over there. Did you finish the race? If you can call coming in 28th, finishing, and I was in training for three months. Hey, there's no key here. Hi, Jake. Hi, Amy. Listen, I uh, think we should talk before the attorneys get there. Hmm? Sure, I'll go get my things. Aren't you Jake Sykes, the writer? All those pirate stories? Can I have your autograph, Mr. Sykes? Sure, kid. The way you started the race, I thought you were going to win. <laughs> well, you can't win them all. I tried to pace myself at seven minutes a mile, but uh, Cece came in faster. Vicky, look. He drew a skull and crossbones. It's kind of my trademark. Nobody saw anything. Everybody was at the race. Well, I've got that writer's autograph. Hey, maybe some of the letters on his autograph will match the ones in that big signature. Gideon Gooch. Check it out. We'll check out Ned Stone, and then we'll meet you back at the cafe. Okay, got it. Gideon 
your key to the office, quick. Excuse me. Yeah. Are you Ned Stone? Sure am. Cece asked us to get a copy of this key. Okay. What's she doing, changing her lot? I don't know. Isn't that her usual key? No. Mm -hmm. Didn't I see you in the race? Yeah. I should have won. I'm in terrific shape, I thought. How'd you do? Great. I was in the lead at the halfway marker. I did the first five miles in 38 minutes. And my leg cramped up. Then what happened? Well, I had to drop out. Walked it off for about 10 minutes. So I watched everybody pass me. Everybody? Yeah. Well, everybody but Jake Sykes. Never saw him go by. Nothing is happening. <sighs> she turned on the set and nothing is happening. I feel we should be concerned here. It's almost five. I'll check it. Oh, if this doesn't work, I'm gonna die! Come on! Oh. <laughs> Ta-da. Uh, oh, come, come on, come <laughs> on. Welcome to today's afternoon movie classic. Today's presentation, playing uncut without commercial interruption, is the classic Casablanca. Starring Humphrey Bogart, Ingrid Bergman, Paul Henry, Claude Rains, and Peter Lorre. Three Two One Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. For a 321 Contact Teacher's Guide, write CTW 2712 Millwood Avenue, Columbia, South Carolina, 29250.